you've been watching any kind of YouTube videos about how to invest into the stock market, the chances are you've probably heard someone refer to investing into the market and letting the compound effect take place and coming back in 20 years time being the best investment strategy. Now for the vast majority of people, this is simply the best investment strategy because the vast majority of people fail to simply beat the overall market averages. But when we're talking about investing into the market, what does this exactly mean? Is it investing into the S&P 500 or the total US stock market or the FTSE 100 or the FTSE 250 or even the all world index. Well, typically most people refer to the S&P 500 when they're talking about investing into the market. And whilst that can be a great investment strategy, if you're looking specifically to invest in the top 500 companies in the United States of America, it might not be the best strategy for everyone. It might not be the investment strategy in which you're looking for, nor the investment strategy that actually could provide you with the best return on investment. So let's explore what options both you and me have when we're talking about investing into the broader stock market. But before I do so guys, my name is Mitch. I post all kinds of videos on investing and the stock market. If you do enjoy content like that, hit that big red subscribe button down below as well. Drop a like on the video guys. It really, really helps out the channel. With that being said, let's dive straight into it. Now, before we explore some of the different options available, first, let's talk about the benefits as well as the drawbacks of investing into a broader market index fund. To talk about some of the benefits, the top one being that it tracks the overall market returns, which is obviously ideal if you're a beginner investor and you're not too sure what to invest in. They typically also have lower fees. They can be passed Passively managed, they can provide great diversification and they can consistently beat the actively managed fund. However, when we look at the drawbacks, one of them being that the indexes are usually weighted and therefore if larger stocks within the index perform poorly, this will have a greater negative impact on your overall investment portfolio. They typically have lower dividend yields and costs can be high if you invest during live market prices. And then finally, you may be in a select few of people who can actually beat the returns of an overall market index and therefore it might not actually be the best strategy for you. But all in all, I'm kind of clutching at straws a little bit when we're talking about the drawbacks of investment investing into an index fund. The reason being that it is a pretty good investment strategy, regardless of whether you are a complete beginner or even a seasoned investor. So with that in mind, let's discuss a couple of the different options and actually show you guys what return on investment you can actually expect from investing into some broader market index funds. So coming in at the top of the list, the one that's most commonly talked about is the Vanguard VUSA S&P 500 ETF. It's a personal favorite of mine, which I hold within my own investment portfolio. It's a capitalization weighted index that tracks the top 500 companies in the United States of America, most of the companies which you've probably heard of. And what that weighted index means is that the bigger the company within the index, the bigger the weighting in which it has within that ETF. To give you guys a bit of an example to bring this to life, if we talk about Apple, who currently has a market capitalization of $2.4 trillion, they naturally have the largest percentage within that Vanguard S&P 500 ETF currently weighted at 5.5%. Then it goes down to Microsoft, who are the next biggest company in the S&P 500 with a $2.1 trillion market cap, and they have a 5.27% weighting within the S&P 500 ETF. So you kind of get the picture, the bigger the company, the bigger the weighting in which they have within the portfolio, and there's plenty of different good quality companies within the portfolio itself, including companies like Amazon, Facebook, Alphabet, Berkshire Hathaway, JP Morgan, Tesla, Johnson & Johnson, and about 490 five others. The reason which I personally like this fund is that it gives you access to the top 500 companies in the United States of America at any single given point in time. And the reason why I say that is the S&P 500 is actually reviewed on a quarterly basis and the best performing companies go into the S&P 500 and the worst performing companies drop out. And because of that, you've only ever got access to the top performing companies in the S&P 500. So with that in mind, now let's talk about some of the return on investment, which has certainly been seen historically, but do bear in mind, past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. So firstly, returns from this S&P 500 ETF can come to you in two different ways. First up, through capital growth, through the price of the ETF itself going up in value, which obviously tracks the overall S&P 500 as a whole. And secondly, you can also draw an income from this fund because it's a dividend yielding income distributing fund as well. And to give you guys the number on that dividend, it currently sits at a 1.13% quarterly dividend yield. So when we combine all of this information together and we account for the capital growth as well as the dividend yields as well, over the past five years, the fund has seen growth of 77.17% 
which is an average rate of return of 15.43% per year. So keep those numbers in mind because we're going to be comparing them a little bit later on in the video because the next fund in which we have on the list today is a again a Vanguard fund and it's the FTSE 250 ETF. Now some of you might be thinking well surely you're only going to want to get access to kind of the FTSE 100 being the top 100 companies in the United Kingdom but historically speaking the FTSE 250 typically performs better than that of the FTSE 100. So because of that I'm not going to waste your time by going through the FTSE 100 and instead we're looking just purely from a capital growth return on investment standpoint so we're just going to be looking at the FTSE 250 ETF which you can get over on Vanguard. So the FTSE 250 ETF for those of you guys who don't know is a tracker which tracks the mid cap size companies based in the United Kingdom. The fund itself consists of 253 stocks many of which I'm sure you guys will have heard of but some of them you probably haven't because I certainly haven't but those top funds include ITV, Electro Components, Foreign and Colonial Investment Trust, Howden Joinery, IMI, Pen and Group, Bellway, Decra Pharmaceuticals, Direct Line and Megit PLC. Now one of the most appealing things for investors right now investing into UK based stocks or UK ETFs is the fact that they're certainly considered to be better value. And we can certainly see that when we look at the price to earnings ratio of this FTSE 250 ETF which currently sits at 12.8 times earnings in comparison to the S&P 500 ETF which currently sits at 26.3 times earnings. So at this moment in time there is currently twice the premium paid for United States based stocks versus that of UK based stocks. And I guess it's down to you guys to decipher whether it's worth paying that premium for United States stocks to get the better return on investment or to actually get better value and actually invest into UK stocks instead. So now let's compare the numbers when we talk about return on investment. So the FTSE 100 currently pays a dividend first up of 1.46% but when we put both dividends as well as capital gains into the picture the total five-year return on investment is 34.53% the equivalent to 6.9% per year. So it's certainly not too bad whatsoever, especially if you're bullish on the UK stock market and are certainly looking to gain more exposure to the UK, but obviously it's not as great as the S&P 500 currently. But now let's shift our focus away from investing purely into the UK stock market as well as investing purely into the US stock market. And instead, now let's talk about an alternative, which is the FTSE All World ETF. Now don't get distracted by the fact that it's got FTSE written in its title because this fund actually tracks lots of different companies from lots of different countries all around the world. In actual fact, the index measures large and mid capitalization stocks, which includes approximately 3,900 holdings in nearly 50 different countries, including both developed as well as emerging markets too. It covers more than 95% of the global investable market capitalization. So it gives you a huge amount of exposure. So now let's dive into the portfolio in a little bit more detail. So when we look at it from a geographical diversification point of view, most of the allocation is certainly towards the United States, with Japan, China and the UK also making up a fair amount of the portfolio too. Then when we look at sector diversification, we have larger weightings towards technology, consumer discretionary, financials, as well as industrials as well. So with that all in mind, now let's take a look at some of the top holdings within this fund itself. Well, as you guys can see, the top 10 holdings are pretty much identical to that of the S&P 500, with the addition of Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company with a 0.77% weighting, as well as Tencent Holdings, which is a Chinese company with a 0.7% weighting. Then when we have a look at the second page, we've then got companies like Alibaba, which jump into the mix with a 0.57% weighting. So you're literally getting a huge amount of diversification all from investing into one single fund. It certainly mitigates a hell of a lot of risk within an investment portfolio, but let's see whether that comes at the expense of overall return on investment. Well, firstly, the fund itself does actually pay a quarterly dividend of 1.27%, which is a little more than the S&P 500 ETF, but not quite as much as the FTSE 250 ETF. But when we look at returns, they're actually pretty impressive. Over the course of the past five years, the total return on investment has been 64.9%, the equivalent rate of return of 12.98% per year, which is absolutely phenomenal. So now let's recap these top three funds, which just generally allow you to track the broader market index on the whole. Those three ETFs track the S&P 500, the FTSE 250, and one that tracks the world index. The S&P 500 five-year average return is 15.43%, the FTSE 250 is 6.9%, and the all-world fund is 12.98%. One important element which I haven't yet discussed is the fees in which which you'll pay for actually buying into these funds. They're also referenced as something called an OCF or an ongoing charge fee, where the S&P 500 is 0.07%, 
The FTSE fund is 0.1% and the All World fund is slightly more expensive at 0.22%. So all in all, for pure return on investment, the S&P 500 ETF certainly takes the win. So they are some of the top funds on the Vanguard UK website, which will simply allow you to track some broader market indexes, which is perfect for the beginner investor as well as the investor that just simply wants to passively invest into the stock market. But as always, guys, I'm really interested to know what ETFs you guys are investing into to track some broader market indexes. So be sure to let me know what they are down in the comment section below. And with that said, guys, if you did enjoy the video, be sure to smash a like on it, subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. And with that being said, I'll see you over in the next video.